Rotterdam map is based heavily on the Battle of Rotterdam that took place beginning on May 10th, 1940, just days before its devastation from being bombed out by the Luftwaffe. During the invasion, the Germans employed a new type of chalk trooper that had yet to be seen in the war. The Fallschirmjägers, a German paratrooper airborne unit that was created for a new type of warfare. Airborne. These elite shock troopers landed in the Netherlands taking control of the Haug before engaging with the Dutch resistance in Rotterdam. Hey everyone, what's going on? Christopher, the video game historian here with another video on who's who in World War II. With this video, I'm actually not going to be taking a look at the Fallschirmjägers as I have already done so in one of my previous Under the Skins videos, but rather taking a look at the man who created this unit and oversaw their operations, especially those in Rotterdam. General Kurt Student Born in Birkholz, Germany on May 12, 1890, he would enlist in the German army in 1912 as well as receive his commission that same year. During the war, he would attain the rank of lieutenant and following the year after his enlistment in 1913, would go on to transfer to the German Army Air Service as a recon pilot flying bombers and proving himself as a capable leader and commander. When the war was over, he remained in the military continuing his career working for a secret air ministry called the Fliegerzentrale, which conducted training of military pilots despite the ban on military aircraft programs under the Treaty of Versailles. During his time at the Fliegerzentrale, he would pass on his knowledge of flying to new pilots tinker with new ideas involving aerial combat and take part in illegal training maneuvers in Russia, during which the idea of a Blitzkrieg would come about. In 1934, as the Nazi party was expanding and gaining power, he would join the Luftwaffe working with Hermann Göring to expand this branch into a separate and independent entity from the army. With students' help and expertise, he was able to create Göring's version of the Luftwaffe. In 1938, after being promoted to Major General, Student would be ordered to establish and take up command of the 7th Flieger Division, Germany's first parachute division, the existence of which was initially kept as a secret until the Blitzkrieg in Western Europe. These men, who would become part of this new unit, were recruited from volunteers only and went through rigorous training. Regardless of rank, every soldier went through the same three months of training that focused mainly on infantry, demolitions, and parachuting. This was done regardless of rank to ensure solidarity and mutual respect. In 1940, as Germany was gearing up for their invasion of Western Europe, Student convinced Hitler that his paratroopers could be of use. Agreeing, Hitler gave Student's Fallschirmjägers the task of destroying Belgian and Dutch defenses and seizing critical transport points ahead of the main German advance. In May, at the start of the invasion, 4,000 paratroopers dropped down in an airborne assault on the Haug and Rotterdam. Once on the ground, the Fallschirmjägers managed to quickly and swiftly take out most of the Dutch resistance and defenses around the country and in the city of Rotterdam. During the Blitz on Rotterdam, however, Student would be struck in the head by a gunshot and placed out of service until 1941. The success of this airborne division did a lot to convince Hitler that they were a viable asset in the war and to the German military machine. Upon his return in January of 1941, after recovering from his gunshot wound, he got involved with helping Hitler plan new operations for his airborne unit. Operation Sea Line was one in which paratroopers were to be dropped into England and Northern Ireland, as well as planning an airborne invasion of Gibraltar, but ultimately both of these plans were abandoned for one reason or another. Student would get a second chance to show off the effectiveness of his men in May of 1941, however, when they were sent in to invade Crete. While this invasion would go on to be successful, it began as a disaster. The men and equipment landed in the wrong areas and even worse, the Allies were aware of this invasion due to decrypted radio signals. This attack will cost the airborne unit nearly 4,000 men in casualties. Shocked at the high cost of life that was lost during this invasion, Hitler decided it would be best to cancel all future airborne invasion plans. Students' men were grounded and used as elite infantry units 
being sent to fill in the gaps in the German lines in Russia. By 1944, these men would be used in Belgium, Italy, Holland, and France as ground forces. There was one exception, however, and that was in September of 1943, when students Fallschirmjägers worked with Skorzeny's Waffen SS to rescue the fascist dictator Benito Mussolini at Gran Sasso. This involved an aerial glider infiltration to rescue the now defunct dictator. Student was heavily involved in planning this operation with Otto Skorzeny. In 1944, after the Allies had invaded Normandy, Studis Fallschirmjägers tried to halt General Montgomery's advance towards the Rhine, but were ultimately forced to retreat across the very same river. With the Allies now in control over the skies in Europe, any chance for a final airborne drop was now lost. In April of 1945, as Student was inspecting his troops in Schleswig-Holstein, he would be captured by the British. The Germans would surrender not too long after in May. With the war finally over, Student would be imprisoned and tried for war crimes that he had committed with his Fallschirmjägers in Crete in 1941. While he was found guilty of some of the charges, he wasn't found guilty of all of them, and within three years he was released from prison. Student would then retire to Lemgo, where he would reside there until his death in 1978. Now that's all I have on General Kurt Student, and I know some of this information was very similar to my Under the Skins Fallschirmjägers video, but I hope I was able to put some new information in there about the man who organized this unit. Now as always, if you enjoy this video, please let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are, as well as by liking the video itself and subscribing to my channel. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media with Twitter and Facebook. And until next time, I'll see you all on the battlefield. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media with Twitter and Facebook. And until next time,